Hi Aries, welcome to your April 2021 tarot reading. It's Raina here. So happy birthday. A lot of you are going to be celebrating your birthday in April and that alone makes it a very um, energetic time for you. I've done a um, video for your sun and rising sign in Aries for April. So you can check out my channel um, if you're interested in the astrology. I'm just going to do the tarot for this one. And uh, if you would like to um, have me analyze your charts, look at the year ahead with, uh, you know, your birthday, either having just come to pass or is coming up, I would be happy to do so. Uh, the link is below. Okay, so I've got these. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Three of Wands is actually really great for a fire sign like Aries, okay? It looks like you have a lot of things going on. Oh, okay. Alrighty then. Let's see what we've got here. And in the Northern Hemisphere, of course, it's spring and the Southern, it's fall. And spring and fall, one thing that they have in common is that they are mellow seasons. They're not the extreme, you know, at least where I live in the Chicago area. It's like we get pretty extreme weather. We get four seasons, but the summer and winter are the extreme versions of, um, you know, the whole whole year. And uh, it's not like, I think England is probably always in the 50s, right? Or um, or San Francisco or something. I've never been to either England or San Francisco in this lifetime. But uh, uh, these, these areas that seem to kind of stay in the same range all year round. Okay, so the heart of the matter is the three of wands and um this is a card if you think of the number three you're thinking of or you're talking about um expansion and this is creativity and this is fun you know the three of cups is a card of socializing and things like that but it's really a card of joy and with wands and and but expansion and with wands we're talking about career creative pursuits, and just overall freedom. So in even in this deck, this is the, my go-to deck, the Morgan Greer deck, you can see the mountains in the background. And that's to symbolize that you are looking for greener pastures, or that's not really what I'm talking about, um, you know, wider pastures. Just that you're, you're looking um, for um, new sites and new places. And that's what expansion really can be, you know, when you're not just staying in your comfort zone, but you're going and you're maybe moving uh, or, you know, traveling, things like that. So I don't know how many of you have had that on the back burner, but that could certainly be something that has been uh, on your mind at the very least. The past position or you know what has led up to this is the ace of swords and this is a card of mental clarity so this can be as simple as um you being a little bit confused as to your path and now it's like all systems are go and you can see like it's almost like um the surgeon with the with the uh, knife that very like you know kind of uh, piercing the air and really piercing through that that fog that confusion that um, sometimes plagues us when we're in between stages of life. So an example would be, let's say you're somebody who's, um, you know, of retirement age and you're an Aries. And so most Aries people are still very ambitious and energetic. And, you know, you don't want to necessarily just kind of, um, actually put yourself on a shelf. You want to still um, be active and contribute and things like that. And so you may have gone through a little bit of 
confusion time and now you're kind of set on, okay, this is what I want to do. And it might be like, you know, okay, I just retired last year. Now I want to travel for some time before I, you know, settle down into a new area because I would like to live somewhere else, but I'm not sure where I want to live. You know, it could be as simple as that. So I always talk about people having career uh, aspirations, but sometimes there are other things that are going on. And I, I, somebody was saying, you know, wrote to me in a comment on, on my channel and said something like, well, you know, not everybody's doing this or doing that, having children and stuff. And I said, you know, that's absolutely the case. And so that's why I want to mention that. And if you are uh, talking about career paths, you might feel like you've been there, done that, and you want to move on. And Aries is one of those signs that it's so easy for you to get bored. If you're doing the same thing over and over again, that isn't going to work for you. And so you may just want more variety in your life. And I wonder if the number three, you know, um, Gemini is the third house, if there is some connection with that and maybe even Mercury or something. I know Mercury... Yeah, I don't want to get into it, but <laughs> uh, it's associated with uh, number five. But, uh, you know, I'm just curious, like, if there's a connection there. But, yeah, so it's it's really about all of those things. And it may show up for you and in, in your relationships, you know. A, a relationship may not be what you thought it was. Ace of Swords can really make you uh, maybe get out of some denial in a relationship that you were kind of, thinking everything was great, and then you admit it to yourself, no, it's not. The higher message is kind of reiterating that because we have the Seven of Cups, and this is a card of wishful thinking, muddled thinking, which is kind of what wishful thinking is, and um, maybe just mental confusion, same thing, I guess. Um, having too much on your plate, like too many choices and things like that, but I think it's more of the confusion angle and I think it comes from the self. And because Aries is very um, active, you may have a hard time um, wanting to just like contemplate the things in your life, think them over. You're always forward moving. And I think that's really actually very good overall. I think a lot of people get stuck in the past. But the one area, it could be a blind spot for you because you might... Uh, you, you have such a tendency to just like take action, you know, and do things and be impatient about ha having what you want come to pass that, uh, sometimes you do have to, um, kind of pull back and, you know, really think things over, think it very, um, clearly because you may be overly optimistic. It's wonderful to be optimistic, but you might, um, exaggerate any kind of positive outcome and kind of minimize the negative and uh, be unpleasantly surprised about that. Find out that uh, actually you really did overestimate something. And, uh, and then you feel like, oh man, you know, <laughs> what now what do I do? What crosses you is the seven of swords. Now, this is a card that typically I see with uh, deceptive situations. I don't see that in this particular case. What I see, this is a card that can be about being very discreet. So I definitely, this is what I was just kind of alluding to, although not really um, in that particular vein. You know, Aries, you are very open. You're like an open book. So if you, let's say that you're not happy in your place of employment, you may just come out and say it, but you may be in a situation where they're not going to accommodate you. They're not going to give in to your demands. And so really you're just kind of giving away your playbook. And if you are not working with an honest bro for an honest broker, they can, um, you know, one up ship you or whatever you want to call it they can kind of uh checkmate you because you're giving them all this um information ahead of time 
And if they're, if they're the kind of people that are vindictive, they could, you know, uh, make it hard for you to get another job. Like if you say, well, I'm leaving you for this other company because you didn't do this, that, and the other thing. And maybe you're being a little bit vengeful yourself if you feel like, because the Ace of Swords, there may have been some deception on their part. Um, and you may be like, okay, now I'm, now I've got them. I'm going to, uh, you know, throw it in their face that I have this other job offer or that whatever, you know, your plans are. And with the seven of cups, you have to be careful about accepting a job offer too rashly because it, you know, all the glitters may not be gold. And, um, and also, so that could be part of that deception. You see, it's funny, I, I have two sevens there. Um, and, um, but I also think that it's like really about strategizing, you know, making sure that you are taking moves that will actually, you know, um, have you move forward rather than, um, trying to, it's, it, I'm not saying that you, you're taking revenge because, like in a very, you know, mean sort of a way, you may have been led on by um, your company. Maybe you were promised a certain type of position. Um, you know, things have really progressed in the last month, at least in my country of the United States. And I'm sure for some of you, a lot of you, the same has, has been the case to one degree or another. And so the, so people who have been in a strange holding pattern with their employer still kind of connected to it, but maybe not the way that they had been before. Um, there may be like this feeling of you're, you're connected, but you don't have this firm, um, description of what you're going to, you know, what, what is going to be your job role or something like that. Or maybe you've just found out and it's not enough for you anymore. And that's what the, the three of wands represents. So the bottom line is being able to, um, you know, keep your cards close to the vest and also be very deliberate in your planning, you know, not being somebody who is just kind of you know, out of the gate, like a bull in a china closet type of thing. Um, what's coming in? The two of pentacles. This can be like weighing two offers. One of them can be far away overseas over a body of water. Um, this could be even working two jobs. And this may be like maybe moonlighting and things like that. And, um, balancing two things in your life, but definitely when you see a two, and especially in this particular position, you might be kind of like, okay, should I stay with them or should I, you know, go with another offer? And maybe there's a lot of offers coming to you, like I said, but you have to make sure that they are all viable offers. The outcome is a queen of wands. The queen represents the water element. So there's an intuitive aspect to it. And the wands are very ambitious with the fire element. So using your intuition to decide like what is the best, uh, thing for you and your feelings, what are your feelings tell, telling you, uh, if you are a mother or a parent in general, Queens can be mothers, but you can say the nurturing instinct what would be best for your child? You know, is a move going to, maybe a move would be the best thing for your child in this, in a way. Only you know what they are capable of or what they like. And that can be something that is, um, something that they'll, they'll look back on and remember if you're going overseas and they have this new adventure, but I think that you're in the mood for an adventure. So I have a feeling that if this reading resonates with you, Aries, that you're going to uh, pick 
an adventure and usually every single time. <laughs> Okay, that's what I have for you. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you'd like a private reading, um, I do a lot of astrology uh, readings using your natal chart. Um, I'm at rainandmoonastrology.com. The link is below. Take care. Bye.